What's going on team, Killchain here, and if you've already seen these particular guide videos, your support is greatly appreciated. We're sort of going through our wrangle of all the Season 4 melee specs. Melee? Melee? Google! Melee. Melee? Alright, let's look at the American pronunciation. Melee. Fucking weird. So first we have the Covenant, and nothing truly encapsulates the death and decay of a Death Knight. Like the life-bound planes of Ardenwild and the Night Fae Covenant. So, Mythic Plus and Raiding, Night Fae is your go-to choice. However, get cozy with the Necrolords if you plan to PvP, as Necrolords, by a very large margin, is definitely the best Covenant. Abomination Limb, already our best ability, got buffed in 9.2 as well. Uh, however, as I've mentioned in other previous videos, don't stress, Changing Covenant is very easy once you've hit the max level as 80 on one of your Covenants. You can freely, no penalty, change whatever Covenants you want. And the cherry on top is there is still the item from Ouroboros next to the Flight Master that instantly boosts you to Covenant level 60. So to wrap up the Covenant section, we do need to look at Soulbinds and Conduits. So Mythic Plus, we run Karain. Karain is going to be picking up Wild Hunt Tactics, basically above 75% health, you do more damage to the enemies. So not your health, their health. So obviously this encourages us to front load a lot of the damage. So each new mob pack that you're pulling, once a tagger, uh, tank has aggro, tagro, wow. Well, uh, tank has aggro, go nuts, front load a lot of your damage uh, to get the extra bonus from Wild Hunt Tactics. We pivot to the left, so Potency Conduit, Everfrost, Remorseless Winter does more damage, stacks up to 10 times, literally god tier in Mythic Plus, like Remorseless Winter is one of your big damage AoEs, super low cooldown, does even more damage, it's no brainer. Part of that we get Horn of Wild Hunt, so Soul Shape increases move speed of nearby allies, minor, but still we'll take it, cool. Spirit Drain, Fidelis Conduit literally gives us runic power, so resource management based on successfully interrupting. So awesome, it encourages us to interrupt, that's amazing. The next choice is irrelevant, just more mount speed or no durability loss on your weapon. Pick whichever one you want, doesn't matter. Now, in terms of the next session here, we're gonna run straight down the guts. We pick up two endurance conduits instead of getting an extra potency conduit. However, the reason being is first strike versus face your foes. It's a bit weird, but basically the defensive passive is with the potency node and then the offensive passive is with the endurance node. Bit weird, but sure. We don't want less damage when we're standing in front of a target because we shouldn't ever be standing in front of a target, basically. So first strike, um, that's the passive we get, which just increases our crit chance by 25%. Um, as long as we damage an enemy before they damage us, which again, tank's gonna be handling all the aggro management, so you're always gonna have that front load of 25% crit chance, which again, ties into the fact that you're front loading a lot of your damage, it means all that front load of damage has 25% extra crit chance, amazing, awesome. The endurance conduits that we're picking up here, we get condensed animosphere, which you may have noticed now, every single person that at least has one endurance conduit is always gonna run condensed animosphere. And then the second one we run on uh, hardened bones. This turns Lichborn into a bit of a damage reduction as well. Things are getting spicy, you have Lichborn as an extra reduced damage uh, cooldown. So cool, happy days. Potency conduit again, so we're picking up accelerated cold, runic, uh, runic Empower rune weapon, sorry. Um, quicker recharge time, grants more haste. I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's just a nice, easy pickup. Definitely the best one that serves our purpose there. We get a little bit of leech from damaging enemies within eight yards. Cool, awesome. As a part of hooking out to the right, we get another finesse conduit. This really helps with Frost DK's mobility issues. Um, typically, in every other scenario, we do struggle a bit with mobility. However, Fleeting Wind, the first three seconds grants us extra move speed. Really, really potent for move speed in uh, raid environments, especially scenarios where a particular mechanic requires you to travel decent distances to either drop a bomb outside of the raid or move to a safe area, things like that. Um, this is very helpful. Combine that with the fact that we run Soul Shape as well, um, just by nature of being Night Fae. All mobility issues are solved when you're running this um, as a Frost DK, so happy days. And lastly, the capstone option we have is obviously Wild Hunt Stratagem. In essence, whenever you proc the Wild Hunt Tactics at the start of the fight, you get one minute to make them go all the way to 35% health, and then you just do extra damage um, below the 35% health for 10 seconds. So essentially, any Mythic Plus scenarios where you're at least getting the mobs from that 75% health range to 35% health range, 
within a minute you're going to be doing extra damage to them so cool in super high keys it's less relevant because obviously it's going to take a good couple of minutes or something to get a pack down um but in your mid to low range you're going to be blasting stratagem free damage extra there so that's your mythic plus setup okay so now raiding we run dreamweaver so as you really got a sense with Karain, a lot of that front up front damage first strike and the way that wild hunt tactics work it really encourages obviously high mob turnover so next mob obviously moving on quite quickly front loading a lot of the damage and it's really just not conducive to an actual raid environment so that's why i queue in dreamweaver we'll run over the talents and there was quite significant things to touch on uh, once we've done all this based on which different type of frost dk you're going to run and we'll touch on that shortly now to begin with pot tender this basically is really good in raids because if you done goof and accidentally die to whatever mechanic or you know healer's fault the bastards didn't heal you you at least have the opportunity of staying in the fight and um yeah getting your tender to help get you out of a sticky situation Finesse Conduit, Spirit Drain again, the resource management and Runic Power from successfully doing an Interrupt, awesome, we'll take it. Everfrost, now you might think things like Eradicating Blow or Unleashed Frenzy is a go-to, however, uh, Remorseless Winter in this particular situation, one, you always want to run it anyway, the 60% increase to Remorseless Winter still completely dominates even in a single target environment, let alone an AoE environment, and you know, there's a decent number of raid encounters that do have some sort of AoE impact so well worth picking up there we want to pitch to the left so we get another potency conduit soothing voice is little, uh, basically nothing but sure we'll take it because uh, we have to accelerated cold again runic power weapon uh, recharge quicker and extra haste no brainer we we'll always pick it up endurance conduit lo and behold condensed atmosphere the one thing that we always see all the time um, we actually want to run somnam so i'm actually going to completely switch that over uh, this is the best one here again the other one falling damage is just sort of irrelevant but in this case especially even if you're doing um, mythic plus or in this case a raid environment spending 60 seconds in a rested area increases your move speed by 20% for 30 minutes so if we just move to this rested area right here uh, while we look for it we're just gonna let that tick over and yeah we'll be able to see a 30 minute buff and that's kind of cool because in a raid you get 30 minutes of 20% increased move speed which is kind of nutty um, field of blossoms the next one down standing in our death stew gives us haste definitely standing in the death stew always worth it 15% haste is pretty pog so um next one down we have a additional potency conduit again you're probably going to be assuming we're going to run either eradicating blow or unleashed frenzy the option out of these two because these two are always like bis and always run these essentially is unleashed frenzy this works out to be better rather than eradicating blow although both look promising obliterates to do more damage to your next frost strike stacks up to two times very similar to the warriors uh, old do two executes to get a better mortal strike you get the idea um very similar to that it seems on paper like it should be good however unleashed frenzy ends up putting out a bit more stacks up to three times you basically get six percent extra strength essentially um however you'll notice that we don't pick that we are going to grab when you healed by other players you get more strength it's noticeably not six percent strength it is only four percent strength however this is conducive to a breath of Sindragosa build we haven't touched on talents yet so we're going to have a look at that in a sec but just for a loose momentum this is going to be your dual wielding breath of Sindragosa build because as you can imagine when we are running a breath build we're not frost striking as anywhere near as much so therefore you know doing extra damage on your frost strike is less relevant because yeah it's just not going to really be useful and likewise using frost strike to help gain our strength is going to have situations where it falls off because during the entirety of our breath of Sindragosa, which we're super encouraged maintain your breath as long as you possibly can you're going to be sinking all your efforts um all your runic power into the breath itself and then all your efforts into maintaining it as long as possible you're not going to get it for frost strike so it's literally irrelevant for a breath of Sindragosa build however like i said despite the fact that the everfrost and accelerated cold are still your best conduits to go even in an obliterate build with a two-hander the moment you do run an obliterate build unleashed frenzy pops its way in so obviously i'm not at the little thing over here let's just swing over here uh adaptive armor out unleashed frenzy in this is for an, a two-hander build running obliteration instead of 
the Breath of Sinjagosa builds, and both of them are pretty viable. The reason being, although I do find Breath to be significantly better, the moment you get one of the big ticket items, let's be real, we're specifically referring to Gavel of the First Arbiter from the Jailer, um, the proc on that is so demonstrably powerful that it really does put Basically, if you get that weapon, you're going to be running two-handed obliteration specs. So, yeah, keep that in mind. So, they're the two alterations that you can make. It's only just one uh, conduit, so it's not too bad to swap out. And it really boils down to how lucky you get. And whether you end up spending your dinar on a gavel, for example, um, you've got that option there. So, whichever way you happen to go, keep in mind that, yeah, the moment you do get a two-hander or you do get gavel, unleash Frenzy out for the adaptive armor fragment. Definitely the way to go. Uh, and then as we wrangle our way down, we pick up the Waking Dream you take uh damage below 80 percent of your health so you get a shield so cool and again fleeting wind more movement speed from your death's advance happy days dealing damage or healing a target as the dream rover dream delver sorry capstone talent um dealing the damage grants you increased damage for uh or healing on that target uh up to three percent so cool just gives you a little bit more output on your boss and this is an example where this does last the entirety of the fight it's not just for the first 10 seconds or anything like that so dream delver um is actually going to be a benefit right the way through so that's your raid setup uh the only thing of note yeah is like i said one of those potency conduits just swap out based on whether you're running two hand or the dual world breath of cinder grace suspect so now that we literally just spoke about these two possible builds let's check them out in the talent section so icy talents and murder sufficiency these are your stock standing go-to's you don't ever change these regardless of which build you're playing and regardless of whether it's mythic plus or raiding now the next line down you do have a couple of choices to make irrelevant of whether it's obliteration spec or breath of cinder grace spec more to do with mythic plus or raiding in mythic plus blinding sleep very powerful aoe disorientate super useful Whereas, as you can imagine, on a raid boss, literally irrelevant. However, Death's Reach will be your pickup. Extra range on Death Grip. There's always mob spawning, ad management of some description. You can grip them in so they can get cleaved down. Or um, Season 4, we obviously have the affixes. So you've got those weird protoform things that spawn and need to be interrupted or whatever cases. If your group needs a grip in, happy days, you've got extra range just to make sure you can secure the grip and not be out of range accidentally. Next line down, Avalanche, again, just like the other two uh, at the top, just all specs and scenarios, you always run Avalanche. We have a bit of a choice for this next line down between Wraith Walk and Death Pack. So Death Pack gives you a heal, Wraith Walk increases your move speed and removes roots. Again, scenario can change one way or another. I do like that Wraith Walk means that you literally cannot be reduced below that 70% increase. And 70% speed boost is like bonkers. That combined with your Death's Advance Sprint, which is an extra three, uh, three seconds of super speed, basically, and Soul Shape, you can see why uh, Frost DKs don't have any movement ability issues anymore. But if you do need a bit more survivability, then Death Pack's your better option in there, two minute heal. Uh, the next final section is Gathering Storm and Breath of Sindigosa. This is the dual wield uh, build that I was referring to. And because of that, a lot of your runic powers all getting spent on breath rather than frost strike. So that's why, as we touched on, all those conduits just don't really get used that boost up your frost strike. Literally irrelevant in this build. Gathering Storm, we do run in two hand spec regardless as well. Uh, however, as you can imagine, we would drop out of breath and pick up Obliteration instead. Uh, instead sorry. Get your nice two-hander. Hopefully you get gavel or if not, spend your dinar on it. So happy days. And once you've got that bad boy, you can swap out that one condor you touched on as well and um, start pumping some big damage that doesn't as heavily rely on breath, especially if you don't like that play style. Then you can go back to uh, pumping some frost strikes as well. Pick up um, that conduit that increases your um, strength when you do the frost strikes, which helps out dramatically. An extra 6% strength is very nice, and you'll be able to actually maintain it for basically 99 to 100% uptime. So awesome. These are the only changes you'd really be swapping around. A couple of minor talent things there. Uh, and now as for PvP, we're going to have to yeet over to Necrolord, and we'll, we'll show you the rundown there. Legendary lightning round. <gasps> First up, we have Unity. Unity is obviously the freebie second legendary we get for doing the Zerath Mortar storyline in patch 9.2. Now, when we run PvE, we run Night Fave. When we run Night Fave, this will turn into Rampant Transference. Increased strength from Death's Dew, increased duration on Death's Dew, but most importantly, increased root power and generation while we're standing inside of our own Death's Dew. So, really powerful for both two hand and dual wield Breath of Cinder Ghost spec, but naturally lends itself to more juice on the Breath of Cinder Ghost build as you're standing inside your Death's Dew. More runic power generation naturally means more uptime on Breath of Cinder Ghost, which naturally also means 
means more damage. Flip it over to PvP, we swap over to Necrolord. Unity will naturally transfer into Abomination's Frenzy. Abomination limb duration increase. The frequency of Rhyme proc produce extra increase. And also, and last but not least, extra damage on your first successful landing of one of the ticks of Abomination limb will increase your damage against that target by 20% for 12 seconds. Absolutely amazing DPS cooldown. Back over to the PvE side of things, your legendary in tandem with Unity. In Mythic Plus, Barton Cold. Remorseless Winter, super low cooldown, 20 seconds, standard AoE ability that does a lot of damage and increasing that damage by 30% as well as when you hit three unique targets uh, in one particular tick you get a free worm proc as well happy days raiding rage of the frozen champion is our way to go this bad boy um, already again really strong and powerful for two-hander as well as jeweled breath of Sindigosa. however you'll notice it also tends to lean more juice towards breath of Sindigosa build so there seems to be a pattern here as I'm sure you can tell and obliterate has a further increased chance to trigger the rhyme procs by an extra 15% and when you do your howling blast while rhyme is active you gain the 8 runic power naturally feeding more runic power inflow while you're channeling your breath of Sinjigosa. awesome last but not least we have pvp you could run Coltira's favor just for a flat out better time when you're spamming obliterates and given that pvp predominantly uses the two hand obliterate spec you could get some use out of this, but in my opinion, playing to the Frost DK strengths, Absolute Zero is the way to go. Frostworm's Fury reduced cooldown by 50%, so you can pump it out much, much quicker rather than the three minute cooldown, which is baseline. And more importantly, it freezes all enemies for three seconds that it hits. Really good and powerful that plays into Frost DK strengths in melee cleave situations, whether you're using it offensively to lock out an enemy healer while you're going for a big death push essentially or even in raided battlegrounds you can use it defensively as well for peeling out for your healer for example a lot of different uh, avenues that you can really put to use and i think it really plays well into frost dk's prowess and what they're good at so yeah legendaries that's it so pvp time let's take a look at what we're picking up as a necrolord so fleshcraft it's not just for the nice shield but you also get the fact that while channeling it you do 20 percent redux uh reduced damage so uh, take 20% reduced damage though. So as part of that, do keep that in mind when you're being burst on or anything like that, that channel can save your life, definitely. So it's not just about the shield, but um, just the act of channeling does damage reduction, happy days. Abomination limb, absolutely crazy. It does all your AOE, keeps them locked in, good for melee cleave, does good damage, procs all your extra hits from it as well. It's just awesome. So abomination limb, very powerful for a PvP environment. Uh, in terms of what soulbound we run, honestly, it's kind of crazy because all of them have relevancy. You've got uh, the Bonesmith is very good for just best output that you can do. Hyma, uh, sorry, Ameni is really um, powerful for a burst window. And then Marilus, like you're happy in between, bit tanky, bit damage, good consistency, essentially. Uh, for me and the purpose of this guide, definitely recommend Marilith. If you're getting to the point where you're min-maxing and really changing in and out your soulbinds on a case-by-case -case basis, on rated battlegrounds versus normal battlegrounds versus arenas, depending on what comp you're going up against, casters, melee cleaves, all that kind of stuff, then you're already there. You're already like super into PvP and you're gonna be making those decisions for yourself regardless. So as a foot through the door sort of a deal, Marrow left your best bet. We're picking up Accelerated Cold again, a rune, uh, rune weapon, and power rune weapon ability, sorry. Recharge, extra haste, awesome, no brainer. We're actually gonna get the Insatiable Appetite Endurance Conduit, extra healing from the Death Strike, awesome, love it. Potency Conduit, Brutal Grass, A-Bomb Limb does 51% more damage because, you know, we just definitely need more damage on A-Bomb Limb. It's just ridiculous. Very powerful Conduit. Um, as always, Hardened Bones, you've seen that a few times already. So Lichborn does damage reduction, happy days. Another Potency Conduit, this is where we will be getting Eradicating Blow. So in this particular play style, we always run two-hander, always run obliteration, and um, this is much more suited to a PvP environment where you want those big hits. So building up your obliterations to do a big frost strike, they work in tandem with each other very nice. And as for the finesse conduit, obviously we're not picking up fleeting wind like we typically do. Reduction to icebound fortitude's cooldown is a really solid pickup here. So um, this is what we're gonna be running. This is what I'd recommend. And again, as you get more into the Frost PvP playstyle, you will, can take the options to chop and change. Definitely well worth running this to begin with though, to get your feet wet and uh, then start evolving and growing as you get more into PvP. As for the talents, we do need to take a quick look at these. Exor uh, inexorable Assault. I don't even know how to pronounce that actually. 
But either way, that's what we pick up because we're running that two-hand obliteration build like I mentioned. Murder sufficiency. Don't get the deaths reach because again, I mean, maybe you want it in a battleground so you can just be like absolutely decimating people, grip the next person in, delete him, yeet him in, delete him, yeet him in, delete him. You get the idea. But in actual raided battlegrounds or any other scenario like that, blinding sleep, a disorientate against healers or anything like that. Very powerful cooldown. Avalanche, as always, typical. Wraith Warp, not really ne as necessary. You want the defensive from death pack, so definitely recommend getting that. Gathering Storm, again, never changes. Always want to pick that up. And because we're running two hand, obliteration for our two hand build as the final talent. Uh, this is going to be, yeah, your setup. That's what I'd definitely go for here. As for the PvP talents, Chill Streak, never don't get this. This is shit is insane. 45 second cooldown on absolutely bonkers movement speed reduction and big damage. And the fact that it bounces, think Lich from Dota, like way back in the day. I don't know if it still even plays like this, but it reminds me exactly of that spell where the alt would just bounce between people constantly like 10 billion times. And I think that's where they sort of got their inspiration for it. But that's essentially what it does. It does bonkers damage, um, really powerful in twos or in... Um, even threes for that matter if you've got a nice tight melee cleave lockdown um especially if you're running with a warrior and he does his spear of bastion or something they're all locked in chill streak bouncing between them all super falls off if there's any pets involved so keep that in mind because it does have a chance to bounce to pets so when you're up against your hunters and warlocks and stuff that's where you need to sort of be like oh okay chill streak doesn't have as big of an impact strangulate very powerful um one minute cooldown silencing them for four seconds really good really good um yeah definitely very useful skill to try and snipe those uh kills when a healer can be locked out from range and uh, granted they did used to have 40 yard range it's only 15 now it's been that way for a while so you do need to work it within your means there but it just gives you an extra uh, interrupt and a four second silence can be quite powerful bit of chill this is what i'd recommend to run the other one the other option i would suggest is potentially dead of winter really powerful because as you tick it up to the five times it stuns for four seconds very powerful aoe stun um probably worthwhile running honestly uh as long as you're guaranteed to make sure you get all your hits because keep in mind it does increase the remorseless winter's cooldown so instead of being a nice quick easy 20 second cooldown it does go to 45 but it gives you a four second stun at the end as long as it ticks five times all right um otherwise you're running bit of chill which just makes your, your chains of ice reduce the target's haste um again pretty powerful uh nice big haste reduction uh eight percent is quite hefty as well especially even on casters and stuff like that right so um helps you lock them down increases their casting speed and everything like that so they are your talents that you're running for pvp so hopefully uh yeah get in there start doing some big demuge and to finally wrap it up, we have the gems and enchants, and I'll be honest, we're a melee plate wearing DPS, so it's pretty much well stock standard across the board. We get your enchant strength on gloves, we get your primal stats on chest, for example, uh, your typical fortified speed or avoidance, whatever you prefer on your cloak. Uh, we are predominantly a crit mastery build, so that being said, we get crit on all our ring enchants and gem slots and everything like that. We are in a unique position though, because we get to run our own special DK um, weapon enchants, so Fallen Crusader is what we run on our main hand when we're dual wielding as well as the only enchant for a two-hand obliterate spec and then uh our offhand we run a hysteria a nice new rune that um definitely feeds into the breath of sindagosa build as we get extra runic power um for our maximum pull as well as a chance on hit to grant the 20 percent increase runic power generation for eight seconds so that's what we run on the offhand and yeah that's pretty much all it uh hopefully you know using this will help you get your foot through the door when starting out your dk let us know how we uh how you found it or if you have any further questions i have found that for my warrior in particular there's been some tweaks that you've learned over time um so by all means any questions that you have or any suggestions you might have leave it in the comments below uh it's a collaborative effort because if someone else sees the comment and we've had a discussion on it and there's a nice thread going then they'll only learn and benefit from that as well apart from that if we do any more i think the next one might be a havoc demon hunter do you guys have any preference of what you might prefer to see uh what you want me to sink my teeth into to learn and get the nitty-gritty of i've you know played a decent a bit of havoc demon hunter so uh that's probably the next that i feel most comfortable in terms of what i'm capable of 
knowing enough about to be able to put forth an opinion as opposed to just completely going i'm gonna do a guide on the fire mage because i thematically like a fire mage and i'm gonna tell you how to play it right even though i've never fucking touched a fire mage in like years so you get the idea thanks for watching uh hopefully yeah you learned a little thing or two like subscribe all that usual annoying stuff that people have to say because they're content creators blah. uh but i'll see you guys in the next video peace